We finally know the details of Sukuna's binding vow, so let's talk about it. But if you're not caught up on the manga, we'll see you in the next one. So the binding vow I'm referring to is one I have theorized about, but it has now been confirmed in chapter 255. Sukuna performed a binding vow in his fight with Gojo in order to get off a world-cutting slash without performing its requirements. So if you'll recall, this is the state Sukuna was left in after getting hit by Gojo's hollow purple, and most notably, he is missing one of his hands. Well, in the latest chapter, 255, we find out in order to activate the world cutting slash, he must perform the same hand sign he does for his domain expansion, Malevolent Shrine, which requires two hands. Now clearly this would have been impossible for Sukuna to do in this condition, so we now know that he made a binding vow in this moment in order to perform the world cutting slash without requirements, but in exchange for that, he would have to have extra requirements for every world cutting slash he did from this point forward. So not only does this binding vow give Sukuna the ability to cast the slash period, but it also has the added benefit of being an attack that is a complete surprise coming out of nowhere. No hand signs or anything, right? So this helps to explain why Gojo was hit with this, even if he didn't think it would get past his infinity. Alright, so Sukuna uses this binding vow to get the sneak attack on Gojo, but in return, he has future requirements on every world cutting slash. So what are those? Well, he's gotta do the hand sign like we talked about, he's gotta do the chance, but additionally, he has to set the trajectory of the technique with one of his palms. Now this is interesting because this would be impossible for any normal human to do, which makes sense for such a powerful binding vow, right? You're getting a supremely powerful attack with no conditions, so the other side of that vow has to be a hefty price, and it is, because this requires at least three hands to do, and humans only have two. But of course, Sukuna is no ordinary human. He has four arms. So making such a requirement is pretty meaningless to him because if he's taking out Gojo, his only threat, sure, he can add in an extra hand to set the world cutting slash because, you know, he's got those in spades. So I love this reveal because not only does it square away the final moments of their fight, but it also speaks to his battle IQ and genius in general, right? To concoct such a binding vow that really doesn't give him any weaknesses in order to accomplish exactly what he needs. Now with all of this being the case, there's still something interesting to dissect here about the world cutting slash. Every time we've seen Sukuna do this since the one against Gojo, he has seemingly performed all of these requirements, whether it be against Kashimo, Higuruma, or Maki, right? However, there's one he did against Akotsu in the domain that's kind of vague. And it was this moment here. Now let me refresh you on the context surrounding this moment. Sukuna was in Akotsu's domain and he was having to perform the hollow wicker basket to not get hit by Jacob's ladder. But it got to such a point where he decided he had to take a gamble. He was gonna drop hollow wicker basket in order to perform the world cutting slash. And we know now that he had to drop hollow wicker basket because it takes three hands to do this, right? But the boys were prepared for this eventuality. So as soon as he drops it, Akotsu cuts off one of his lower hands and then Rika and Yuji grab the other three. Now, Yuji then like enters into the innate domain and starts talking to Megami. So let's just say theoretically, he was able to wrestle free of Yuji's grip. That means he has one free hand at the bottom, but both of these were still being held by Rika. So it would have seemingly been impossible for him to cast the world cutting slash. But the way this plays out is we kind of just jump from one panel to the innate domain, to the slash happening. So either Sukuna somehow did this slash again without all three requirements, or off screen, he wrestles his hands free from Rika. But the way this pose is, you know, it looks as if Rika is just now letting go and Sukuna is just embracing the moment. So I'm curious to get y'all's opinion on this. Do you think this is some sort of plot hole? Do you think it just happened off screen and we didn't get to see him make the hand sign and do the requirements? We do see him make the chance. So it is, you know, the world cutting slash that's implied here. Or do you think Sukuna perhaps made another binding vow where he somehow got rid of making the hand sign? Or could it be that he just did like a watered down version of the world cutting slash where he only performed the chance and the palm directional ability, but didn't make, you know, the malevolent shrine hand sign. There's a few different possibilities here. I don't really know where I land on it right now. My best guess is that it was the world cutting slash and it was kind of an off screen thing, AKA plot hole, if you want to call it that. Um, but it's interesting nonetheless. So please let me know y'all's thoughts.